What are some of the worst business practices you've seen? A veterinarian I once worked for tried to make me reuse bloody fourth tubing between patients. Just rinse it out he told me. He charged the same amount for a pain injection for a £5 pet and a £150 pet. He overworked and underpaid his employees. He was rude to his clients and tried to make staff carry out tasks they were not qualified slash educated to do. He would cut corners in any possible way. Several of us reported him to the board. Did the board do anything? Yes. He was investigated by the Canadian Board of Veterinary Medicine for several different infractions. Staff and I gave statements and then. During the investigation he returned to India for a scheduled visit but didn't return. Last I heard he and his newly graduated son had opened a new practice in Michigan. That's demoralizing. Can you send an anonymous tip to the board in the US or Michigan? I did at the time. I called the state board and gave them his name as I knew it. It was tough though, because he tended to use a nickname or English chosen name. I'm not sure. He was also being sued in India. Hostility towards raises. Rewarding your existing employees is almost always cheaper than hiring new. I've had a manager that scoffed at a single 3% raise for someone who had no raise for 5 years. Good luck hiring a new person with that experience and for less money. There's a reason why job hopping gets you more money. And it's not because hiring new is cheaper. Same. Company changed owners and suddenly did an about face on raises and promotions. My manager straight up lead to my face and doubled down when called out on it. My husband is an EMT. He got a job offer that paid him $6 more per hour and his boss told him not to take the offer. Because he will give him the upcoming promotion when the senior EMT quits. So my husband did what he said. He didn't take the job offer and waited for the promotion. Then he found out someone else got it and he obviously asked his boss WTF happened. His boss said it wasn't guaranteed. He was just putting his name in the hat with a good word to the senior boss. Which obviously wasn't true. But there was nothing my husband can do about it legally at will state. So my husband got his paramedic license and now he's going to get even more money. Just gave his two weeks notice. Congratulations. Thanks. He's not the only employee who quit because of his boss's shady practices. Either. The company is about to go out of business and they still pull this shit on the employees and wonder why the new hires quit so fast. Go figure. Any company slash service that allows you to sign up using the internet with minimal verification but requires you to either produce ID, bills, proof of address, or show up in person to cancel that service. If I can set it up via the internet I should be able to cancel using the internet too. You mean. Planet Fitness? Yes. I moved to a whole new state and they refused to let me cancel or go into a location in the new state to cancel because it wasn't my home gym or whatever they call it. I hate them. I think you can call your bank about that and even get charges reversed. Yup. I had the same situation and had to call my bank to stop all charges coming through from them. I used to serve at a restaurant where we wore pages that buzzed us when a table's food was ready. Good idea right? Well the owners had the policy that you had to immediately go pick up the food no matter what. And that included if you were in the middle of taking another table's order. They said that people understand and are cool with it. Of course they weren't though. Every time I stopped taking a table's order and went and got the food. They were totally pissed off. I could not believe the owners did not understand while literally no other restaurant on the planet does it that way. I worked in a small boutique hotel with a fine dining restaurant and a gastro pub connected. You had to juggle service and reception all the time. A hotel director felt it would be appropriate for us to wear a headset to answer calls for the hotel while serving to make sure we didn't lose out on any room sales. Stating that the customer would be understand as long as we excused ourselves. And here we have some locally sourced braised lamb. Served with vegetables grown at a farm located just north. Excuse me for a minute while I answer this call. Yeah. That would definitely get a response of stunned disbelief from me. Yeah. Exactly. I have never seen Bo and Fo coming together in a more glorious way against this. And he had to accept defeat and tell the sales department that they unfortunately still had to do their job. 
I use the term business loosely, but I once did graduate research with a professor who was in the process of trying to get a major auto manufacturer to invest in a lab. They liked us, but wanted an example of some of our work, so rather than directing them to some publications of ours, my professor gave them a zip file containing all of our recent unpublished research, including the basis for a patent application. My professor was shocked when they just kept it. What a moron. IDK how you get to that point in life not knowing that car companies play dirty. That's why he's in academia and not in business. From all accounts the academia world is as dirty. I worked at a restaurant that wouldn't let people get a refund on their food. Even though there was a cockroach in it. Instead they offered a 10% discount on the food as per their policy. Needless to say this restaurant no longer exists. Gosh. How many cockroaches did they serve? In the short time I worked there. It happened 4 times on my shift and several others when I wasn't working. Owners did very little in the way of maintenance. It wasn't in a good location and the customers weren't rich by any means. I guess they just got lucky until they served the roach to the wrong person. TBHIDK the exact reason they shut down. What the fuck? That's a lot of roaches. This blows my mind. I worked in food service for over 20 years. I served zero cockroaches to people. It's not difficult to do really. Then why is your count still at zero? So this store put a massive discount on weighted blankets. They were originally selling for $150, but were now being offered for $39.99. The catch. You'd need to sign up for free as a VIP member online. Erm um, okay no harm done. So I signed up and bought the blanket. And so did thousands of other people. The store cancelled our orders and refunded our money. Claiming that they weren't able to fulfill our orders. And now they had a couple thousand more new names on their mailing list. And sure enough marketing emails came pouring through. I unsubscribed once but still had emails coming in. Fuck you Spotlight, Australia. Spotlight posted my wife vouchers that were only able to be used in store. Their store was click and collect, or delivery only during the height of the pandemic. Spotlight refused to allow them to be used in store, and refused to extend the offer end date. Spotlight sent a lot of these to VIP customers in Victoria. So rude. My first job as a teenager was at Spotlight. It's such a shady company. If they treated their customers as badly as they treated their employees I wouldn't be surprised one bit if they sent out the vouchers on purpose. Knowing they couldn't be redeemed. I worked two shifts in a spotlight store before being told that the overtime I'd worked was unpaid. When I picked up my bag to walk out the manager threatened to call the police because I was disrupting legitimate business. Yeah. Now. Get stuffed. I heard this one from a friend. She worked at a dog kenneling business that would tour prospective clients through the front of the building and show off how each dog would get its own indoor slash outdoor run area and specialized attention, etc. Then when Thanksgiving and Christmas came and they got more bookings than they could accommodate, they set up cages and stacked kennels in a back room and people were paying big dollars thinking that their dogs were in a nice roomy pen while the business crammed as many dogs as they could into these basic cages. It was shameful. This is why it's good to find ones that give you 24 over 7 video access. How dare they? Body comes for dogsy. Then the dog keeper turns his off. You know shit going down. <laughs> Trying to get employees to quit. My managers at fast food didn't want to keep long term employees due to having to pay them more. And firing them means unemployment costs. Us quitting means no unemployment and not having to give raises. Edit. Thanks for all the upvotes and the award. Never thought it would get so popular. To answer a question as to why I didn't force them to fire me. Broke college student. They had flexible hours and I got a free meal. Where I live. They stop scheduling you except for like 1 or 2 hours a week. You qualify for unemployment if they do this to you. Just FYI. It's called constructive dismissal and you should put that on your unemployment insurance application. I worked for a big car rental company in the returns department. They would push us to find and charge customers for any new damage on their cars by awarding bonuses on top of our monthly salary. 
we were given mirrors to look for scratches under the cars where costumers would normally not have checked before they rented the car, often leading to heated arguments over if it really was their fault or not. The company did not care either way and made us charge their insurance deposit if they refused to pay. The daily verbal abuse and stress from being sandwiched between my managers and angry customers has definitely left a mark on my mental health and I will probably never work in the traveling industry again. I sort of felt this. The Hanks 4 confirming. I once rented a Porsche for a weekend. Literally drove to my girlfriend's. 50 miles. Stayed the weekend. Drove back again. Car was still immaculate. Dropped it off. Nothing said. Two months later get a charge on my card for £1. 000. So I call them up. They say the windscreen was chipped. And needed to be completely replaced. The windscreen was fine. So argue this with them. And call up my credit card. Get them to put a hold on that charge. Tell TH car company. Get me some proof. Time goes by. Nothing. I call them back. They say they still waiting. This B goes by. Still nothing. I call them back. The girl says it's been repaired at a different branch. It was 90 pounds. So I say hold on you're charging me 1 pound. 000. Yes. But you just told me it was 90 pounds? No I didn't. Yes. You did. Do you record all your calls? Yes. We do. Then I want a copy of this call under the Freedom of Information Act, specific UK legislation. She puts me in hold. Comes back in 5 minutes. We'll waive all charges. 2 months later. They still haven't cancelled the charge to my card. So I call them hello. What are you playing at? Oh. We've lost your car hire voucher. The one you gave us when you collected the car. You need to send us your copy. No. I don't. You just need to cancel the charge. But we need a voucher. And we've lost yours. So we need you to send us yours. No. You obviously had my voucher. Because you handed the cars over to me. If you've lost. That's your fault. And. Your problem. You cancel the charge immediately. And go looking for this lost voucher in your own time. Charge cancelled so. How many other people do they try this with? And how many just pay? Major banks sorting your transactions. When you have a low balance in such a way to maximize overdraft fees. Honestly. Overdraft fees in general. Many banks will charge you an overdraft and deny the transaction. Because apparently it costs them $35 to deny a transaction. Perhaps the easiest way they could prevent overdrafts that aren't the account holder's fault would be to ban demand drafts that are not accompanied by a court order. As it stands. With most auto pay agreements the company sends a demand draft to the bank. They have the freedom to request more money than what you agreed to. We dropped an insurance company because they tripled our premium without warning. It's also how the Nigerian oil scam works. They use the info passed to issue demand drafts and clean out your account. With real banking services, you tell your bank how much you want to pay vendor X every month. And they cut a check to that vendor every month. If you vendor wants to up the amount, they have to get your to agree to it first. 